everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. Welcome to some movie news. Um, I guess movie news with 22 Tiger Dude and guests. And of course, this is a segment where I do talk about some movie news that happens. And I am here with my guest star, Mr. W. Hello, everyone. You're probably wondering why I'm here and wasn't here the other time. Well, let's just say I don't know. Yes. That's my intro. Okay. Next one here is Justin one. Watches Movies. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not start kissing Cohen. We do not need that. And then here, Mr. Adam Haskell. So. Okay, guys. So let's go ahead and get into some movie news. This should be interesting. So let me go ahead and pull out an article. And the first movie news we're going to be talking about is the fact that Oscar winner Brie Larson is in talks to play Captain Marvel. According to what it says here, it just says that Brie Larson is the number one person that Marvel is eyeing to be playing Captain Marvel for the movie that will be coming out in 2018. 18. So we don't know what's going to happen from there. We just know that she's in talks. And all I can say is, honestly, I did say my thoughts on Twitter and all that stuff. So if you guys follow me on Twitter, you basically know my thoughts at this point. Uh, but in my opinion, I'm actually down for this just because Brie Larson is a very talented actress. And, you know, although she already has a lot of attention from Room and her winning that Oscar, I think she'll have even more recognition finally being in a blockbuster. You know, she's been in other, other wide releases. Like, she had a short role in 21 Jump Street, and she did have that one line in Don John, which was interesting. But really, she's been doing more indie type of movies. But if she's in Captain Marvel, more people will know who she is. And honestly, I want to see her get more recognition not just that, she deserves to have a blockbuster of her own. And looking at the images, you know, if we're if we're talking like Captain Marvel with the longer hair, I think she could fit that role very well. So honestly, I hope she will be confirmed because I can totally see her playing Captain Marvel. I am on Team Brie Larson. I support this casting choice 100%. Uh, WWE fan. Uh, your oh, thoughts man. on that. Everybody's going to be rolling their eyes once I say my thoughts. Because, all right, Brie Larson, very good actress. You know, I really think she's a very good actress. You know, she's proven it before. You know, although I didn't think her performance was phenomenal, but she was still good in Room. Nonetheless, I still really enjoyed her in 21 Jump Street. But, however, this role deserves to go to Charlize Theron. It's just that simple, people. It really is. It's that simple. I think that's the one that can pull it off the most, and I really do think she's the perfect choice to play Captain Marvel. And honestly, I I know she was in a superhero movie before. I guess you could count as a superhero movie, Hancock. But yeah, yeah. But. You know, it will be nice to actually see her in a Marvel film, but I don't know if because of how busy she is with... I don't know if they're going to bring her back for the Mad Max films, if. I don't know, because they keep on saying that they're not going to have Furioso, but that could just be, you know, speculations. But it's yeah. going to be in the next Fast and Furious movie, so there might be some complications, but I really do think Charlize Theron is the perfect choice. But when I hear you talk about that, we're here to talk about Brie Larson. Uh, you know... I wouldn't mind the choice, honestly. You know, it it's not my like number one choice for the character, but I do think she could play the part good. I think she would do a good job. Sweet, uh, Justin, uh, would you like to see Brie Larson be Captain Marvel if she ends up gaining the role? Uh, yeah, I don't know too much of the character Captain Marvel in the first place, but. Um, when she's very good looking, she's a very good actress too. She was great in room, and I 
I think Marvel's doing good with casting um, some Oscar winners. There to come our batch being Dr. Strat. It's a good thing for them that they're going to have that star power in there uh, to back up their movies. I don't know anything about Captain Marvel at all. So, But um, Brie Larson's a really good actress, and I think she could make a good Captain Marvel, but I don't know anything about Captain Marvel, so yeah. All right. I think I'm. I think I'm like the only one here that at least knows some things about Captain Marvel. Oh, I know a little bit about. Just know her name, Captain Marvel. Me too. All right. Now let's move on to the next news. All right. So the next news is that Emily Blunt and Lin Manuel Miranda. Um, I know some of you are going, who's he? Well, according to the article I'm reading from Today Pop Culture, he was from a Broadway show called Hamilton, but him and Emily Blunt are confirmed to be in Disney's live-action adaptation of Mary Poppins Returns, which they're planning for Christmas of 2018. So, in my opinion, I'm actually up for Mary Poppins Returns because... Um, sure, there's going to be no Julie, uh, Julie Andrews. I actually have heard that Julie Andrews approved of this whole project happening, and I heard something about her actually approving of Emily Blunt having the role. So that's very cool to hear, honestly. That's cool that this movie basically got her blessing. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually down for Mary Poppins Returns. I think they can do, they can pretty much continue on with the story from the original um, but, you know, basically with the different cast members now. So I'm very interested. Um, Emily Blunt, I think, is a great casting for Mary Poppins. As for Lin-Manuel Miranda, I don't, I'm not really familiar with him, but I'm sure he'll do a very good job as well. So, yeah, honestly, I'm up for Mary Poppins Returns, and that's all I have to really say. Uh, w. Um, you know, I'm a fan of both casting choices. I mean, you know, I'm not too key on the whole thing of doing Mary Poppins Returns because the, the original Mary Poppins actually holds a lot to me because it was a movie I loved as a kid and I still do to this day. But the fact that even Julie Andrews herself uh, kind of, like you said, gave the movie her blessing, that kind of makes me give a little bit more hope at least. Like, I'm like, right. okay, if she's okay with this, then maybe it's something special, so and also, uh, uh what's the dude's name, um Lynn manuel Miranda I actually know who this dude is because I've seen him on a few episodes of Jimmy Kimmel and stuff, I've seen some stuff with him in the Hamlet play, and this dude's got, got some skills, he really knows how to sing, you know he seems like he has a lot of personality to him, so I'm excited that he's going to be probably, I believe this will be his first movie, so I'm excited yeah. to see him in it as well. And Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins, so I think she'll be good as Mary Poppins. We'll just have to wait and see. Sweet. Justin. I'm actually against this movie. I don't want to, I'll see it, but I don't want it to happen. Poppins is just so good, good and I hate the character so well, Julie Andrews, and I, you know, nothing against Emily Blunt, but do the same thing as Julie Andrews and create that same charm that she did and the music and everything. So I, I will see it, but I'm like, I don't want it to happen. Yeah, that makes sense. That's understandable. Uh, I haven't seen Mary Poppins for a really long time. Uh, but I remember, like, really enjoying it, though. If I watch it again, I don't know how I'd feel. I'd probably still enjoy it. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm on board with it. Emily Blunt is a very talented actress, and I think she could make a good... Uh, isn't it? Is she playing, isn't she playing Mary Poppins, right? Yeah, she's playing Mary Poppins. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah she'd make a good Mary Poppins, I think. So, yeah. Okay, so the next news lineup we have is that... Um, Star Wars Rogue One is apparently getting reshoots. Disney ordered and had an, they had expensive reshoot um, just to do Rogue One. Apparently, they were doing some uh, tests on the movie, and they thought, according to what this article says, is that much of the cast and director Gareth Edwards will, will regroup in mid June. For another round of shooting, the movie is happening after executives screened the film 
and felt it was tonally off what a classic Star Wars movie should feel like. The pick has not yet been tested before audiences, but one source describes the cut as having the feel of a war movie. The goal of the reshoots will be to lighten the mood, bring some levity into the story, and restore a sense of fun to the adventure. Oh man! Yep. Really? That's what it says. Okay, I'll, right. I'll talk more when we get to me. I'll talk more when oh, we yeah, get to Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have something to say, right? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, well... Um, that, that's one of the things I was actually looking forward about Rogue One is the fact that it felt like a war movie, like based on the trailer that we got. I actually liked the fact that they were going more for a war vibe. So to do it because it didn't feel like Star Wars, like, come on, it's still going to feel like Star Wars, even if it's more of a war tone kind of movie. You know, they did a good job with um, Star Wars The Force Awakens, so... Whatever they have going, whatever they feel is wrong, I trust them. But to hear that they're doing reshoots just to kind of, I guess, you know, make the film feel more Star Wars-like instead of making it have more of that serious war tone, um, it kind of does have me a little bit worried. But who knows? Lots of movies get reshoots. I mean, look at Civil War. That had reshoots before the film even released, and look how Civil War turned out. In my opinion, of course, Civil War turned out really excellent. So we'll have to see how it goes, but mm, not too big of a fan of the reasoning for doing reshoots. Oh, man, like, here's the, here's the thing. It's, it's like... This is why I feel like no one has creative control anymore. They don't have the freedom to do whatever they want with the film. It's because executives pound on them way too much to like, oh no, this is what we want. Like, how would you let the director take a chance maybe and let him do something different? Yeah, I agree. And that's why I feel like, you know, more or less more movies feel like the same nowadays is because I feel like studios really pound on their directors to do more or less the same. And like, yeah. oh no, we don't want you to do this, no, we want you to do do this, do it the way we want you to do it. And this was the same with Spider-Man 3. Like, Sam Raimi didn't want Venom in there. He hates the character of Venom. He didn't want him in there, but Sony was like, no, you gotta put him in there, you gotta put him in there. He was like, you know what, fine, I'm gonna put him in there, but I'm gonna waste his character completely. So, it sometimes can backfire on them real badly. Yeah. And I just hope this doesn't happen with this movie because I was excited that this was going to be a different Star Wars film. That was going to be like, a, like you said, a war film. Maybe, like Saving Private Ryan in space, basically. Yes. But now that the fact that they're redoing reshoots just because it doesn't feel like a Star Wars film, it still felt like a Star Wars film even though while watching that teaser trailer, it, it still felt like a Star Wars film, and I just don't know why, you know, um, well, I was going to say, uh, that they're doing reshoots because of that. Though, like I said, the reasoning is stupid, so that's my thoughts. Okay. Uh, Justin. I'm I'm listening to all of your guys' things, and I'm kind of like torn between I can do it and I don't want it to happen too. I can see that they want to turn up because it does look like a war film and definitely does. But look at the director, and you know Godzilla was not a light film, so that's his style of directing. And I like that they're taking a new approach and taking risk with it, but also. I can understand that they want to bring fans in and they want to bring kids in and everything and they want to have a light film. They want it to be family fun and this does not look like a family fun film. It's like it's for the diehard fans of Star Wars that knows the story. So I can see why they want to make it more lighthearted to bring the kids in and I, just, but I also want that nice risk and approach of a new Star Wars that we haven't really seen before. Yeah. Um, Adam? Well, I think, like, let's see. Um, I think, like, the director, honestly, should just, if, I think he should just keep, like, what they already had, honestly, not, like, do reshoots, because it 
if he liked how I was or something, he should just keep it, honestly. Yeah, it's really that the execs that are... It's really the execs that are, like, really worried, according to the article. Yeah, if he likes it, he should just keep it. But maybe... May, at the same time, it could be for the best. Maybe, like, the reshoots will help him. we be better. You never know. Now the next one we're going to be talking about is that apparently we have story details on what Cars 3 is going to be like, which is released in the theaters of June of next year. And apparently this is what it says. The story is that Lightning McQueen, Owen Wilson, needs help competing in the increasingly high-tech racing world. That's where the new trainer comes in, the sleek yellow Cruz Ramirez, is a young Hispanic female race car who instructs Lightning McQueen as this exclusive concept art depicts during a beach run. Um, you guys can't see it, but there's a couple of pictures of like Lightning, Mc Lightning McQueen and Cruz like racing in this very like I guess foggy like racing area. It says that director Brian Fee, um, who's worked with Pixar before, if I'm not mistaken, says that Cars 3. Cruz trying to figure out how this old dog can learn some new tricks. And apparently the film will be a love letter to racing and the American way. And it was inspired by the Americana you see traveling through the south where every small town has a dirt track. <clears throat> now, personally, um, in my opinion, of course, I love the first Cars. I think the first Cars is great. Second cars, I know a lot of people aren't a fan of, and while it's and while it's most certainly not one of Pixar's best, for what it was, I had a lot of fun with that movie. I just saw it as another spy movie, but in car form, and I, and I saw it as a way of them kind of paying homage to some of the more silly or cheesy spy movies, in my opinion. That's why, personally, I like Cars 2 more than most people. But Cars 3, you know... Based on what I'm reading the storyline, it, it kind of sounds like Pixar was listening to people's criticism with Cars 2, because a lot of people's criticism with Cars 2 was that Mater was the main focus. It looks like they're going to go back to Lightning McQueen now being the main focus, and him having a new trainer you know, to get this whole race scene started. So honestly, based on the story details, I'm honestly up where Pixar is going to take Cars 3. Those are really my thoughts on the story details for Cars 3. Um, UW? Who cares? Just, who cares at this point? Who cares? Like, really, they pushed back Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4 for this. Well, That's Incredibles they... 2, I don't think they pushed back. I think it was just Toy Story No, they 4. pushed back Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4 to make more room for this movie. Oh, okay. Which makes me even madder. I'm right. serious. <sighs> if you guys know me, I love the first movie. I actually do love the first film. It is a great movie, in my opinion. I don't get the hate with the movie. It's a great movie. However, the second movie is one of the worst anime films I've ever seen in my life. One of the worst sequels I've ever experienced. And it's just complete garbage. And... Garbage. I just garbage. But I just have I just have practically no faith in this third one. Not even these story details interest me, honestly. Maybe once we see a trailer and and like it, sure, maybe it might look cool. Is it coming out next year? Yeah, it's gonna come out on June sixteenth oh, yeah, and seventeenth. Next year is also gonna be the uh, second year with um two Pixar movies. That and this movie called Coco. But yeah. I think it's going to be Pixar's first no, no. or whatever. Oh, wait. On the way, Coco is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, I, I, was, gonna be I, was thinking of the, I was thinking of the, that Disney Samoan Hawaiian film. That's what I was thinking of at I'm first. actually really yeah. interested in Coco because it's going to be Pixar's like first musical. But, um, yeah, <clears> Cars <throat> 3, I'm not really looking forward to it. I mean, like I said, these first story details don't, don't really interest me that much. Who knows? They could make a great movie out of it, and it could be great. But, however, I'm just not looking forward to it. And, like, seriously, I would rather have Toy Story 4 and Incredibles 2 right now than have this. So, that's just my two cents. All right. Justin. Nope. Don't want to see this movie. I... I don't really like Cars. I don't like Cars 2. 
I don't know, understand why they're making an effort into something else. I know Tony, you like it, um, but I just I have, I have no no idea about it. I have no interest in the characters. They're ridiculous. Not are fun, but I I have no interest in this movie whatsoever. And I do I do think it's a slap in the face to like um, Toy Story and Incredibles. You know, Cars Two is probably the, like the worst critically acclaimed or the worst uh, Pixar movie, yet they still went with a third one. I think maybe they're trying to redeem themselves and say, oh, this this series is still good, but let's get Incredibles 2 out sooner or Toy Story. Fuck a Bug's Life 2, I don't know. Something else. Do you I'd, actually, rather would have, I'd rather would have a yeah, Bug's you know Life. You know what I really want, guys? I really enjoyed Monsters University, but I think we should get like an actual sequel to Monsters, Inc. as well. I wouldn't mind Monsters Inc. too, honestly. Bugs Life, I don't think needs a sequel personally. Like but I really Monsters want Inc. a Monsters I do Inc. Too. Think could I have really, a sequel. I really want a Monsters Inc. too because I want to see what happens to Boo in the future. Yeah, I think Monsters Inc. can work for a sequel. Um, sorry about that, Justin. Any more you want to add to that? No. Uh, All right. I don't. I don't give a shit about this. I'm not even. This is. I actually made a post about this. This is the maybe. This is probably gonna be the first Pixar movie I'm ever gonna skip. Honestly. I really don't care about it. I, I just don't care anymore. There. Okay, so the next news is that Jeff Bridges has joined the cast of Kingsman, The Secret Circle. No, the Golden... Is it the Golden Circle? I believe, yeah. It's the Golden, it's the golden Circle, Tony. The Secret Circle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought it was. No, but the article's saying The Golden Circle, Yes. He joins the cast along with Taron Edgerton, Julianne Moore, Channing Tatum, and uh, yes, they confirmed Colin Firth, so yeah, but yeah, that's really all I have to say from there. He's just been confirmed. He's added to the cast, and honestly, look, I like Jeff Bridges. I think he's an awesome actor, so I'm definitely up to see what he... I de I'm definitely up to seeing what he could bring to Kingsman, The Golden Circle, uh, Jeff Bridges is just one of those actors where he's very talented, but when he makes fun movies, um, he can be a lot of fun. Like, even in movies I really did not like at all, like R.I.P.D., that movie, I'm sorry, was shit, but Jeff Bridges, along with Ryan Reynolds, they were definitely, they were definitely the best things about R.I.P.D., uh, because Jeff Bridges, he just has a lot of energy, and even if the movie's not good... You can't help but like Jeff Bridges because he adds so much charisma and energy. I'm pretty sure he'll do the same with Kingsman too, but Jeff Bridges, you know, whatever you're doing, man, you have my approval. So, yeah, I'm up for that. W. America. The dude, the dude, the dude is going to be in Kingsman too. This is going to be incredible. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't care if you... Or, like, I don't care if he's just, like, laying back. Like, if he's one of those laid-back characters, that's going to be awesome. And I, ju I just can't wait. He's going to be so awesome in the film. And, yes, Jacoby, I did. I, I do like R.I.P.D. I, and, you know, it, and personally, that's one of my, one of my favorite roles from him because he was just so fun in that movie. He really was. And it seemed like he had a great time. He had a great time making that movie. So, but, um... <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to see what Jeff Bridges does in uh, Kingsman, the Golden uh, Circle. I think that that's going to be awesome. So uh, definitely a good casting choice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sweet. Sweet. Justin. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, Kingsman Secret Service was, like, uh, one of my favorite films of last year, and Jeff Bridges is a really great actor. Um, I could do, actually, something pretty cool with... With his character, maybe I don't know who his character is, but um, he's old, and so they'll probably have like some like elaborate backstory to go with it that maybe you could set up sequels. I don't know. I think it's a great addition along with Channing Tatum. I am worried that it will become like super mainstream and like just like with so many pop stars and everything when. Kingsman was just like a smaller film that not it made a lot of money, but I don't think a lot of people talk about it. It was like 
Um, so I don't want it to become like where everybody is like in and out. It's just like a pop sensation movie that everybody's in. So one low key, but you know, with great actors like Jeff Bridges. Um, Jeff Bridges is a really talented actor. I think he'll do great in um, next Kingsman. So yeah, and the first Kingsman was great. So I'm pretty sure this one will be too. Yeah, I think Jeff Bridges is going to make a great addition to it. He's a great actor. Now we're in the final bit of movie news. And the final bit of movie news is that, of course, due to Dylan O'Brien getting injured on set for Maze Runner, The Death Cure, the movie has been delayed. Originally it was supposed to come out in February 2017, and then we had yet to hear where they are going to delay it to. Now, according to what I'm reading, the movie is going to get delayed to January 12, 2018 is when they said we're going to have to wait for the third Mage Runner. So, honestly, I can understand this, honestly. Um, you know, the wait is going to be long, but I think it's more important that Dylan O'Brien recovers from, inju- from his injury rather than they rush it. So, yeah, just let him recover first, and hopefully Dylan O'Brien will- Dylan O'Brien can recover well, you know, I give him my my deepest blessing, and hope he gets better, and then once they do get back into filming with Maze Runner 3, hopefully they make a really good one, because I really enjoyed the second one. The first one was just okay, I actually enjoyed it up until it went to the third act, that's where it went downhill for me, but yeah, I'll have to see how Death Cure goes, um... You know, it is a shame that we have to wait longer. Like I said, I think it's more important that Dylan O'Brien recovers. Uh, w. Uh-huh. Uh, I still haven't even seen the first two. I know um, I haven't gotten the chance to watch the first two yet, but I definitely will try and see the first two before uh, this third one comes out. So, uh, yeah. Um, hope Dylan O'Brien gets better. You know, I really like him as an actor, and... Hope he uh, gets better. That's all I really have to say, honestly. Uh, Justin. Um, yeah, I understand it. Yeah, I, when he was injured, it was actually, it was like, well, that's pretty sad. You know, he was, he was a great actor. Um, you know, I hope he gets well, and I don't want to rush it. I don't want it to be sloppy or anything, because I actually like the first two movies. They're enjoyable. They're not the best films, but there's some guilty pleasures. I like... I, I enjoy watching them, but I wanted to get you know a speedy recovery. I wanted him to you know fully be involved in the movie, just not I you know shoot this scene here and then I'm injured and I wait a while and then it's just kind of like choppy editing and whatever. So I want him to like just fully shoot the movie and just be okay and healthy with it. I still haven't seen the second Maze Runner, Maze Runner, but um I think it's best for him. I think it's. Well, I think it's the best that's getting delayed so he can heal and stuff, so yeah. I still have yeah. to watch the second one, though. But I think a movie will turn out better if they just wait longer for him to feel better and stuff. All right, you guys, and now that is our moving news. So I want to thank all of my guests, WWE fan, Justin Watches Movies, and Adam Haskell for joining this special episode of Movie News. Thank you, everyone, in the chat room. I've been keeping up with the chat room. Uh, luckily, Google Plus lets me do this now, so thank you to everyone in the chat room. I really appreciate all of your comments. And, of course, you Adam, got- uh, Kevin, you shush it, okay? <laughs> Don't you ever oh. say that again. Oh, yeah, and Kevin Falk did say in the chat room, Dirty Ground Pot is the best movie ever, according to W. <laughs> this is 22 Tiger Dude here with W, Justin, Adam Haskell. Please check out their channels. They all have very lovely channels. I'm going to leave a link to each of their channels in the description down below. And don't forget that we all will always have... Tiger, 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 Tiger,